Sarah. Thank you, Kelly. And Walt, thank you for joining me. I, I know you don't speak out very often, but we're going through some pretty extraordinary times in your world right now. Thank you. Yes, and thanks, thanks for the invitation. Uh, I, I actually learned last night about uh, 10 p.m. that uh, mm. your network had emailed a staffer in our organization about me uh, coming on yesterday. And unfortunately, I didn't as I mentioned, I didn't realize that till last evening. Of course, I've been on many, many times with you before, and so I just want to apologize yeah. for that. If I would have known, I likely would have been on, but uh, <laughs> but uh, wasn't well, aware. Well, we're, you're ha we're happy to have you today, and, and we have to address what's happened with your stock first and foremost. It's not necessarily the first place you'd think about for contagion after a collapse of a bank in Silicon Valley that did a lot of lending to venture capital firms, but... That's what's happened. Your stock is down almost 30 percent over the past week, including today's bounce. Why? Well, I think there's been a degree of confusion on two sides of our firm. The, the first one is the difference between a brokerage operation and a banking operation. Uh, I see people speaking about FDIC, and they have a fairly good understanding of that, that when you deposit at a bank, the bank takes those deposits and invests them. They are part of the bank balance sheet. And then the FDIC provides insurance up to 250000 At least that's the way it's been since, I believe, 2008. Brokerage assets are completely different. So we have about $7.4 trillion that clients have entrusted us with at Schwab. And, and over $7 trillion of that sits on the brokerage side. Brokerage assets are held separate. They are segregated from Schwab, segregated from Schwab assets. This is done under what's called the SEC Consumer Protection Rule. And so those assets are not commingled with us. Uh, I even have heard some pundits talk about CIPIC uh, and tried to compare it relative to FDIC. And of course, there's no comparison. These are segregated assets. And CIPIC kicks in largely only in a situation of fraud. Of course, the SEC requires us to report on the segregation, and we do so regularly, and they audit it. So I think that's the first bit of confusion that went on. People began to conflate CIPIC and FDIC and didn't, didn't really understand the segregation of, of client securities from the rest of Schwab. But and you then do I think have the second deposits, one, right? I mean, you do, you, you do have a pretty robust bank business inside of, of the company. We, we do. And, and that, I think, we is do. where the and concerns the, are. We do, and that's the second one that I want to I want to try to address. Our bank is very conservatively managed. Uh, if you look at the holdings of the bank, we have about 10 percent of client deposits outstanding in loans that are over collateralized, almost exclusively to our clients, very very low risk. And then we have about 80 percent in U.S. government-backed paper. Uh, within that, you effectively you're operating with with virtually no virtually no credit risk. From a liquidity standpoint, we have access to very substantial liquidity. Arguably, we have a level of liquidity over a 12-month period equal to our entire mm -hmm. bank sweep deposits, around $280 billion. So uh, I understand that, that there were banks that got into trouble. Uh, we have a, a reasonable understanding as to how they did so. But those applications, we don't believe, apply at Schwab at all. We do understand, though, that when our stock price went down at a rate that was in some manners consistent with some of the regionals, that people easily put us up on slides and, and talked about us in a manner consistent with some of the regional banks. Completely different model, completely different. I mentioned, or you mentioned earlier, that 80 percent plus of our deposits in FDIC insured balances. Are insured. Banks that have run into trouble are at fractions of that number. But, but as you say, you've been swept in. Have you seen any deposit outflows? What are you seeing from customers? No, actually, what we're seeing is is asset inflows to the firm in significant numbers. So in February, our clients brought in almost forty two billion dollars in net new assets to us. March to date, they've averaged about two billion dollars a day. Interestingly enough, last Friday, when we were maybe at the heart of uh, the, the peak maybe of some of these challenges before the actions taken uh, by the Federal Reserve around liquidity, 
Our clients actually brought about $4 billion into the firm that day alone. Hmm. Another interesting factoid, the number one stock that our clients bought in, Feb in, in Friday, on Friday, was Schwab stock. Schwab. 